Welcome back. Now the Freedom Front Plus is requesting an urgent meeting with President Cyril Ramaphosa to raise its objections to the proposed constitutional amendment to allow for the expropriation of land without compensation. The party says it will also drum up international support against any such move. The Freedom Front Plus has launched a campaign dubbed Fight Back SA. It accuses President Ramaphosa of succumbing to pressure within the ANC. I am of the opinion that President Cyril Ramaphosa knows that expropriation without compensation uh, is very negative for the economy. He himself said we, that we have to ensure that we have economic growth in South Africa. This is negative. But as far as I'm concerned, he is captured by the ANC. And he cannot do something different of that what the ANC wants. And they have adopted the resolution with the December conference and therefore he has no choice to ensure that that's what the ANC wants they have to do. The presidency says Ramaphosa has stated government's position on land reform and that remains unchanged. But it says the FF Plus is welcome to extend an invitation to meet the president. The party will conduct countrywide information sessions, meeting civil society, chambers of commerce and agricultural associations. It also plans mass protest action across the country as well as mobilizing international support. As far as we are concerned, internationally speaking, it's completely on the wrong side of the law, also in terms of the treaties that South Africa signed. For example, South Africa is a signatory to the uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Just go and have a look at what section 17 of that declaration clearly states. It is against the proposals of that. It's a violation of that section to expropriate people's property without compensation. Meanwhile, Parliament's Constitutional Review Committee says it hopes to develop a program of action this week following the passing of the resolution by the National Assembly last week. Once we've agreed the program and business plan, of course we will send it to the powers that be for a budget. And it's only once we've received the budget will we be able to then go on to the ground. So we envisage doing the planning next week and we'll probably go on to the ground as soon as in the next two or three weeks we will be on the ground. But uh, that will be dependent on how soon we get a budget and how soon are we able to go up front to start mobilizing South Africans. The committee is expected to report back to the NA by the end of August. Abra Barbia, SAB. BC News, Parliament. With the DA COPE, the ACDP and the FF Plus against the motion of expropriation of land without compensation, will this be enough to prevent the amendment of the constitution going ahead? Earlier, the FF Plus leader, uh, you heard there, he said that expropriation without compensation was dangerous and could even start a civil war. Uh, he further said that this move poses a threat to the agricultural sector, private land ownership and the economy, and he believes it will also pave the way for national of land. Now joining us from our Seapoint studio is the Freedom Front Plus leader Peter Krunewald. Dr. Krunewald, thank you very much indeed for your time. The issue of land ownership is you know, indeed an emotionally, extremely emotive uh, issue in South Africa. Do you think the rhetoric being used by politicians are just or reckless? I personally think that it is very reckless and I said that since 2013 this rhetoric started in the National Assembly where members of the ANC stood up and said that the land uh, was stolen by the white people in South Africa. I've warned at numerous occasions that we must refrain by uh, saying that that is what happened in the history of South Africa. I said on many occasions and speeches in Parliament that land is a very emotional issue and a responsible leader in politics will refrain by using the rhetoric to say that the land has been stolen. Because if the moment you say that, you actually say that landowners are criminals and they are thieves, which is of course a lie. And what is quite surprisingly, that uh, even the former president with the 8 January declaration in 2016 at Rustenburg of the ANC, he said that the people in South Africa are poor, they are unemployed, and there is inequality because they don't have land, and we know we have stolen the land. 
Now, that was very, very irresponsible. And only in the debate of the motion in the National Assembly last week, the former Minister for Land Reform, Minister Nquinti, he started his speech to say that the narrative that the land has been stolen is false and it must stop. Now, That's my question criminal. is, why did the ANC and by means of their minister wait so long to ensure that the rhetoric stops? Dr. Hrnewald, uh, what about your rhetoric? Are we not being alarmist here, uh, saying that this will lead to civil war? Because let's get this straight. This is only about policy right now, about amending the Constitution. South Africa hasn't decided to practice the wholesale expropriation of land, firstly. Secondly, there, there are people who lost land. There's a need for land justice. Uh, and, and does your rhetoric itself not feed into the narrative that, that white people aren't interested uh, in restitution? No, that's not true. I never said that white people is not interested in the restitution. In fact, if you go and look at the restitution issue, you will see that at this moment, there are still about 5,000 claims from people as far as restitution is concerned. The problem with land is not that there are no land available. The fact of the matter is that the problem is the incompetency of the government of the day who cannot process all the claims as far as restitution is concerned. And let me give you a good example. In District 6 in the Western Cape, there is a house housing project by the government. It is halfway and then everything stopped. Why? Because of corruption, because of tenders, because of people who cannot continue. So expropriation is not going to solve that problem. The land is available. The project is halfway. And the people of District 6 are frustrated. They are dissatisfied because they cannot move back to District 6 not because of land, but because of the inability of the government who cannot produce. And that is the problem of land. At this moment, the government owns more than 4,000 farms that is actually lying there. And the Freedom Front Plus say they can avail those farms to the people who want them. Even if you listen to the Minister for Land Reform, he himself at one stage said that 93% of claimants didn't want the land, they only wanted the money. So I say it is false to say that if we expropriate the land and we redistribute them, that people will become rich. And because that is really, that is a, creating a false impression and false expectations from people to think that if they have land, then they will be rich. And I can assure you, if you specifically refer to the white farmers, they are willing to participate in a land reform in South Africa. And some of them are even willing to help people to gain the knowledge to become agricultural people and farmers in South Africa. So there is goodwill, from spe specifically from white farmers, but that's not the problem. Dr. Krunewald, we understand that you, your party is planning to drum up international support against uh, the expropriation of land without compensation. Has your party really considered the serious implications and repercussions on South Africa if this is done? Yes, we did. And uh, we weigh that up with the severe implications that if expropriation without compensation goes through, and I do believe that uh, that will become reality. I think people are naive to think that it will not happen. And we say, and if I referred to unforeseen uh, consequences of the expropriation without compensation, one of them is the government may say and think that they will control the process, but I say they won't because the moment the constitution has been amended then it is available, an instrument in the hands of the government. And then people will just go out and we will have a situation of land grab. And they will argue to say, but the government has the instrument to expropriation without compensation. And then I say 
we are on the same road as Zimbabwe. And in the end, if you look at Zimbabwe, the economy has been destroyed. There's even famine in uh, Zimbabwe, and we want to pre uh, prevent that, exactly what's going to happen in South Africa. So if you weigh that up to the consequences to alert the international world of the intentions of the ANC government, we say at the end, it is in the best interest of South Africa, because we must also remember, expropriation without compensation is not limited to agricultural land. In fact, if you look at Section 25, how it defines property, it says quite clearly in Section 25 of the Constitution, it is not limited to land. So Dr. any movable as well as unmovable property is at stake here. Dr. Hrnevold, unfortunately, we don't have uh, any more time. Thank you for your time this evening. Freedom from Press uh, leader Peter Hrnevold. And I, I do have to reiterate right now, it's just policy. It's just about a constitutional amendment. And no decisions on, on who will lose land have been taken mm. as yet. And I think we need to emphasize uh, that. Indeed, an emotive story. Indeed, we'll be keeping track on that on SABC News.